I set this tank up in mid-June 2018 and now we're in mid-June 2021. I'm going to show you how the tank looks at three years old and I'll talk you through some of the changes I've made that have had both a positive and negative impact. And if this is your first time here and you want a weekly dose of reefing goodness, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out when I upload. Now there are times when I've made big steps forward and added numerous corals in a short space of time, and there are times when I've actually removed good sized colonies to free up swimming space for my fish and of course make space for shiny new frags. Although after 18 months I had 15 of the 18 fish I have now at the 3 year mark, so it's certainly fair to say that buying corals has kept me most interested. Now I'm not addicted to buying corals and I can stop any time I want, just not yet yeah. Now when I was putting these clips together, this one in particular really stood out to me. It was taken in December 2019 when the tank was 18 months old. There were a few things that contributed to it looking so good back then, the first of which was the lighting I was using. I had a hybrid of a Giesemann Stella T5 with a Kessel AP700 LED light. It gave an uber crisp white light that really showed off the true colours of my corals perfectly. That was helped by the ambient light of the T5s, which took away most of the shadows, and of course because I had Kessels, the shimmer looked absolutely bloody awesome. I changed to Evergrove's and an Orfex strip light just over a year ago because I wasn't getting enough par, and the Kessels didn't quite give me the deep blues I wanted in the evening. But now Kessel have brought out the more powerful A500X, I'm considering going back maybe with a couple of Orphec or Reef Bright bars either side, for a little more spread, punch and fluorescence. However, the main reason my tank looked so good back then was because my parameters were spot on. I've checked my ICP test from that time, and it showed my alkalinity was at 7 dKH, my calcium was at 420 parts per million, magnesium was 1250 parts per million, and my nitrate was at 4 parts per million with phosphate of 0.02, which is pretty much exactly what I'd choose if I could press a button and fix all my levels in place. And if there are any companies working on such a button, hit me up for a free trial. No? I'll move on. My trace elements were also on point with only iodine and manganese low, so this really is a classic case of old tank syndrome whereby detritus builds up over time and trace elements deplete, making some of my corals fade a little. However, I've been using Red Sea Coral Colours for a few months now and my latest ICP test tells me my trace elements are back to where they need to be. So now I'm looking to get my nitrate and phosphate back down to around 0.03 for phosphate and around 5 parts per million for nitrate. At the moment my phosphate is 0.22 and my nitrate is around 5 parts per million. So all I really need to do is get on top of my phosphate. But on that point it's worth noting that, although I'm quite critical of the colours of my corals, they still look pretty decent and I don't have any algae. And I mean none whatsoever both of which I'm going to take as evidence that stability of parameters is more important than the actual number itself. And that brings me on to another change I made that was for the worse. Around a year ago I tried using carbon dosing in the hope that it would bring my phosphate down, which it did. But because I am the world's laziest reefer, I didn't test regularly and I ended up stripping my nitrate and phosphate down to zero, which gave me dinoflagellates and took me several months to recover from. So this time I'll be trying lanthanum chloride in the form of quantum phosphate remover, but I will go slowly and will test regularly so I don't bottom out again. Lanthanum is pretty spicy stuff, so I will have to tread very carefully indeed this time. Apart from that though, I couldn't really think of any other changes I'd made that I wasn't happy with, and the other significant changes I've made have all been for the good. I got rid of my enormous skimmer rated at 2000 litres when it stopped pulling out waste, and I replaced it with a Deltek skimmer rated at 600 litres. I've said before that I much prefer the Deltek to the NIOS, and it's done a better job than the NIOS did thanks to its more appropriate size. I'm also happy with the additional powerheads I've put on. I started this tank with two MP40s at the weir box end, but the far end of the tank was always quite still, so it needed a little more juice. I thought about adding a gyre which would have given a much more minimalist look, but the MP40s provide a wider flow pattern, so I plumped for two more. To be honest with you, they do look a little messy, and it's fair to say I won't be winning any home interior design awards as a result, but if I was interested in interior design, I might have chosen a different wallpaper. 
Another change that's worked out well has been adding more real estate for corals. Firstly, I bought this plinth to go at the back of my tank in the middle. My aquascape is generally quite low, so I wanted something a little taller. And each of its three prongs are slightly offset, so the corals will take longer to grow into each other. This was a man-made piece that I got from R&R Aquascapes. It did have a small outbreak of furry brown algae at first, but that burnt off over time, and now it is pristine. I also added a few 3D printed 45 degree angles to the weir box, on which I've put a few highlight demand sticks. In time they'll grow out into the tank, hopefully without shading too many of my other acros. And I have a few more of these angles dotted around the back wall too. They're really easy to fix in place, and the corals cover them over time, so they blend into the background nicely. And the final change I made is a more recent one. I've started using a little more activated carbon and I'm now running it in a small TMC reactor instead of just sat in a bag in the sump. That has made a huge difference and my water is now much clearer within hours of me replacing the carbon each time. Although I'm told changing the stuff too regularly can harm fish, so I only change it once a month, maybe once a fortnight if I'm feeling a little saucy. Now while those are the changes I've made for better and worse, one thing I haven't changed is my dosing liquids, and I've used ATI Essentials Pro on this tank from day one. New hobbyists often ask what the best dosing solution is, and actually my opinion is that there probably isn't an awful lot of difference between the brands, and that you're best off picking one and sticking with it. Which is why I haven't felt the need to change. ATI Pro comes in liquid form, so I don't have to mix up powders, and it's highly concentrated so I don't have to refill my dosing containers very often. But the main point here is that sticking with one method will have helped me maintain stable parameters. My alkalinity is pretty stable at around 7.5 dKH and I probably test calcium maybe once a year because I know it will always be fine so long as my alkalinity is okay. Now I wanted to finish the video with these two clips taken after 4 months and after 3 years to show you the progression I've made. One great side benefit of making videos every week is that I get to look back and see how my tank has developed. It's been really satisfying making this video and I'd recommend you take a full tank photo every month yourself so you can do the same thing. All in all then, while I sometimes think I tinker quite a lot, looking back I haven't really made many significant changes and I think I've managed to keep the fundamentals fairly stable. Water changes every week with the same salt, the same flow and lights, well after a bit of tinkering at least, and not playing around with the latest fad of dosing products, for the most part. And I'm now excited to see how the tank looks when I manage to get my phosphate down and maintain it at a nice low level for a number of months. So if you want to see how I get on with that, make sure you're subscribed, and if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next week. <laughs>